In this episode, we're exploring the effects of the full moon on largemouth bass in the springtime. Will I finally break my Mexico PB? And is it scientifically proven if you're south of the border, Takati light increases your fish catching ratio? Let's start the dangle. Welcome back to another beautiful South of the Border Mexico video. This is the final Mexico video in this series, and I am trying to break my PB in Mexico, which is eight pounds. I'm gonna do something a little different in this video since there's so many fish catches that happen in Mexico. To make it worth you guys' time, I'm sort of breaking down what is going on throughout the days. Uh, this is a couple of days, actually, that I'm fishing in this video. And I'm starting out fishing with Juan, and I want to tell you about the wrong decision that we made, given the circumstances of the full moon when we started out the day. In the last video, I noticed when I was fishing with Casey, under that full moon, these largemouth bass, these females, are starting to go to the bank. And they're they're trying to spawn, they're, they're doing their spawning thing during this full moon. And what me and Juan decided to do was start out offshore, which we'll learn pretty soon is, is the wrong poof. We should have gone to the bank. And this is the season where I say, you gotta pay attention to the full moon. Other times of the year, it really doesn't matter. But in the springtime, which of course down here in Mexico, it's, you know, the spawn is January through March. Uh, most of the Southeast in the United States, the Southern States, you're looking at uh, March and April being the main spawn. You're looking at May, June, even July as you get up North. So it really depends on where you are, but that first big full moon during that big spawn month is when you really want to pay attention uh, to some good banks and we'll talk about those banks and what they look like in this video but we started out offshore which is more pre-spawn and post-spawn and that was a wrong move i started out with a search bait just putting a saucy swimmer either on a flashy swimmer or just a, a, a three-quarter ounce jig head just to swim around in some of the deeper water and you know it got a lot of bites and it's a, it's a really good way to catch fish uh, pre-spawn and post-spawn but we really needed to be slowing down with Texas Ooh, rigs, and we'll kind of go through that. But we ended up throwing these Texas rigs in some offshore areas, catching some decent bass. But, you know, decent bass, Mexico, it's fun. But at this point in the trip, I've been catching so many fish. I'm spoiled. I, I'm really just trying to get that big one. So, you know, some two to three and a half, maybe four pounders. Uh, good. Lovely. Love to sniff them. But... I'm really trying to break that eight pound mark. I've been down in Mexico for four years and haven't broken it. 313, three pounds, 13 ounces. So almost four pounds. Oh yeah. Double get it down. Hey. That's Tecate. Tecate. Does it every time. <laughs> And the hilarious thing is for the last three years, I've come back to the States and I've caught a bass over eight pounds within that next month as I get back into the States. So Mexico is like a numbers warm up and just, I don't know, it just greases the skids for me to go and catch a big bass elsewhere. And spoiler alert, I've already done it again this year. No. Two? Yeah. No. Two, yeah, he's probably two and a half. It's bigger than our smallest, but what's our smallest? Two. We'll call him two six, two seven. So we're catching a lot of bass on trench hogs and lunker logs, just dragging them out in you know twelve to fifteen feet of water. As soon as they hit the bottom. And that's that's been a good technique, but oh, it's go. where we need to be fishing is important. So we're fishing offshore humps and points, and this is where um, these big bass like to school up in the post spawn and 
and in the pre-spawn before they move up to their spawning areas. In Mexico, it is a little bit different because they need steeper banks because the water fluctuates so much. So they need access to deep water, but they need some protection. Uh, and they like that little gravelly stuff uh, and, and somewhere that just feels protected. And for this particular lake, that is a, about a 45 degree, maybe a little steeper angle bank uh, with deep water close by that's, that's not... Uh, getting just thrashed by waves and everything like that. So that's what we needed to be looking for. Um, the other guys in this trip, a few, of the, a few of the guys found these areas and had just some amazing days. I think Trent and Trevor, uh, they caught like a 40 pound bag that morning, uh, fishing in these similar areas, which was kind of holding out. I was like, well, offshore always has a big bass, right? Well, not... <laughs> Not this particular time. When you see that full moon in the sky and it's spawn time, go to the bank, all right? Run to it. This is when the big bass are locking down in their bedding areas, and you just need to go slow. You need to fish those areas that, that look good. Drag your Texas rig or whatever it is, your Carolina rig, whatever type of slow plastic presentation that you prefer Take that and put it in those areas and just just hang on. Just go slow. That is the key to catching a big bass when they move up in into these shallow areas. They're on bed, but you can't see them. So you need to just drag that thing really slow where it, it gives them enough time to, to get pissed off, essentially. Go over there and grab that thing. And you're going to catch a lot of male bass in the, in the process. You know, these smaller fish. But... Eventually, you're gonna connect. About to lay the hammer down? Uh, I'm not afraid, okay. <laughs> kind of really felt it on that little rock pile that stuck out right there. Spawners moved up, I'd explain it to you, but you probably wouldn't get it, but they're, they're in here, okay? They're in here. Me and Juan just continue our offshore points and humps and I'm catching them on the saucy swimmers. It, it's fun, you know, I mean, this is typically something I love to do in May, but I just kept thinking, like, golly, we need to go up to the bank. Fish. See? See? No. Logic bait? Yeah, una ounce. Hey, Swim bait. See? Sí. Ate it very nicely. Feel good. Catching them deep. Two and a half. We finally did, but I feel like it was a, it was just a little too late in the day. You know, we were already about to come in for a break and uh, caught a few small ones, but we just didn't spend enough time up on those steep banks. Ooh, little ones. When the afternoon rolled around, we got some overcast and some wind, and my instinct just said, hey, let's pick up this swim bait for a little bit more here. We might have a feeding opportunity, and we were around this big main lake swing area, so I started throwing a saucy, and this kind of goes against the, the steep bank slow dragging, but just given this window of conditions, I thought, eh, this might be a good thing to do right now. 
and I ended up hooking into what I thought was going to break my eight pound curse in Mexico. Saw that. How's a carb? I got a fish. I think it's a big one. Yep, it's a big one. Mucho big. Oh, yeah. This may not be a bass. If it is, it's huge. This is the bass. It's muy grande. Grande. Si. It's gonna jump. Big bass. I think it's a bass. Yeah. Side hooked. Hooked in the side. Barely hooked. Whoopee! Big one. Bloody tail. Grande. That's an eight pounder. Nice. I don't know what happened. Very, oh, it's right on eight. What's it doing? Seven fourteen seems to be hitting yeah. at seven fourteen. Yeah, a lot. All right, seven fourteen, just shy of an eight pounder. That's a stud. All right, let this big bass go. Seven pounds, fourteen ounces. Big girl. Grande, mama. Yee I basically stuck with that swim bait until that wind and the cloud cover started to fade down and then went back and picked up the Texas rig and the guy I'm fishing with, his name's Patrick, he's from SIG and he's got a lot of bass fishing experience as well and we just said, man, we we need to get on these steep banks, don't we? It's starting to get calm, we've got this full moon, I mean, we just need to slow down and so we went to a really good looking steep bank and just started slowing down with uh, lunker logs and I threw a, a trench hog a little bit. Um, and honestly, I just, I had a, I had a lot of bites get away from me. I like I set the hook and the fish was just moving off with that big, that big lunker log, uh, taking, taking the tail. And I probably should have downsized, uh, given that pattern or gone to like a smaller, more compact bait. But, uh, Patrick ended up hooking into so many bites, uh, on well, banks. a giant like this. I haven't caught a giant on him yet. But. There we go. Be a good one. Oh shit, that's a big one. I don't know what a big is, but it's better. It's hold really hard for a second. Yep. It's head shaking. Oh yeah, it's a big one, dude. Yep, yeah, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Go, oh, don't jump on the other side. Come back, come back, come back. Oh, that's a good one, dude. Yes, oh god, that's a big one, bro. Holy cow. That's a slot. That is. Oh, 
Holy. <laughs> or <laughs> bigger. Nine? Yeah, it might be nine, dude. Yeah. What's your PB? Nine something? Nine seven. Pounds and ounces. Really close. Like eight twelve to eight ten. I've I've definitely done my fair share of witnessing of eight pound plus bass in Mexico. I just haven't caught them myself. I don't, I really can't explain it. But uh, I think it's the Takati light. The Takati light just brings luck to my fishing partners in Mexico. And uh, well, here's another Ocho for the records. We had a little bit of time the next day to go out. And I went out with uh, my born and raised boys, Trent and Trevor. And you know, same conditions, got the full moon. Uh, and those two fished together the previous day and just really caught them on those steep, steep banks. I, and I, I knew it as soon as I talked to him. I was like, why, why, why didn't I focus on this for most of the day? But uh, they, they had the right idea as well. And, you know, we, we still caught fish. We, we just, I don't know. We just didn't get into the Giants. Uh, even fishing in the similar areas, I, I really can't explain it other than it's just my Mexico bass curse. But uh, still got to got to witness you know some more decent bass just just no giants the overall key factor in any bank that we went to though was slowing down at this point you'd have little windows where you'd get some wind and cloud cover and they might eat a little bit like they'll grab a moving bait or something but when you pick up a texas rig it's a it's a kind of a drag you're feeling those rocks and the thing that makes this a lot easier that increases your time in the strike zone is just taking that boat and you know in this case I was, I was trying to tell our our boat driver and he did a great job just kind of get us up there closer to the bank and i'm going to cast parallel with the bank and just keep my bait in there right, rather than going perpendicular um, just get close and cast off the bank to where you think those fish are in this case it's you know 12 to 15 maybe 20 feet deep and just drag it through that area instead of working it down through the depths and having to make a lot more cast to intercept those bass. Grande. Grande. It's pretty good. Pretty decent. Yeah, he's got out. I just drink. Overall, another fantastic trip down in Mexico for me. I just can't seem to break the eight pound mark. It gives me a reason to go back for sure, but it's always a good warm up down there for me. And uh, like I said, again, I come back to the States and I have, I've, I've caught a Mondo. I've caught a Mondo uh, for three years in a row now, including this year. So. Uh, you guys stay tuned for the Coogan Squad channel for that. We just had a great kickoff in Florida, and uh, we got we got a lot more exploration this year. 22 is going to be a big, big year for the squad, so really excited about it. Thank you guys for tuning in to my Mexico series of 2022. If you want to check out more of my videos from previous Mexico trips, I'll link them down below. I've been down there uh, quite a few times with the squad and with my dad just some really good trips down there i always love uh, fishing in mexico so i will definitely be back next year and i'm looking forward to catching some more pigs for in spring taking these techniques uh, come march and doing the same thing and catching some toads so i hope this video helped you guys uh come the, these next coming months and i hope you're catching some pigs where you are now so thank you guys for tuning in uh, Godspeed, God bless you in the great outdoors. See you.